Yeah. 
legs, bro. And if I hush too much, I'll help you sell a hi-fi. And if the money gets too tight, I'll help you sell the video. And if it gets too cold, I'll help you sell your clothes. And if you haven't got the shoes, I'll help you sell your bus fares. And if you're sick, we'll charge you double. And if you die, well, we'll put your ashes in the sky and sell you at ten pound a bag. Wouldn't you like to be my friend? I'll be right beside you to the concern. I'll see you all right, won't let them mess you around. I'll be right beside you till you're six feet underground Cause you are mine Mine for life Your life is mine And I will treat you like the shit you are I'll never let you get too far You will see what a friend I'll be When you're shivering, crawling back to me I will sell you all the things you need And you will see the promised land I will give you what you want again and again I will have your money and you my poison in your veins Cause you are mine My for life Your life is mine And I will treat you like the shit you are I'll never let you get too far You will see what a friend I'll be when you're shivering, crawling back to me. I will sell you all the death you need. And when the pain is at its worst, when you think your mind is going to bust, I don't look to me for friendship and support. I hope you die alone in pain. That's all that you are worth, that you are mine. Like the shit you are, I'll never let you get too far. You will see what a friend I'll be when you're shivering, crawling back to me. I will sell you all the death you need. Cause you are mine! Yesterday's. What's in pity? What about yours? Is it today's? No, I'm afraid it's Wednesday's. 
Don't be nothing much happened anyway. Is it? Didn't notice. Of course, I like it that way. I can stand any amount of heat. Yes, of course. It's all a matter of what you're used to, isn't it? Can't stand the cold, though. I have a married daughter living out in Australia. Mm -hmm. They tell me it's hot all year round there. She's always writing, asking me to go out there and make my home with them. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. She's always writing. Asking me to go out there. You should, you know. It's a great country. I was there once in Merchant Navy. What part did she stay? Oh, um, um, what's it called again? What is it? What, I forgot. Uh, what Melbourne. Is it? Yes, that's it. Melbourne. She's always <laughs> asking me to go out there. Well, I'm independent, you know. And I'm very comfortable in my mirror room, really. I mean, I've everything just the way I want it. And it's amazing how you get used to these stairs. Aye, I don't think twice about climbing up now. I mean, it's small, but that's all to the good, really, isn't it? It's not too much trouble to keep clean. And then, things is small. The way I've your fire warms it up quite well, you know. Oh, yes. She's always writing, asking me to go out there and see the children. There must be. <coughs> Quite big now. A wee fire fairly goes through the electricity though, doesn't it? Aye, I'm the same. My son's wife's English, you know. Well, she's very nice, I'm the same one, you know. She always used to say to me that if ever they had a room three, I'd be very welcome to go and stay with them. But I'm like you. I like my independence as well. Oh, aye. I go on fine by myself. And I don't put the fire on all that much. Just a wee well in the mornings when I get up, and a wee well at night when I get in. I just got to my bed very early and I keep finding one and it saves electricity. Aye. The nights are long. And I've not been a big eater. That's another good thing. <coughs> so I don't bother all that much about the cooking. Oh aye. I get on fine. Come on you two. This is a hospital waiting room, not a hotel lounge. Come on. Out into the cold. When I was young, I was often ill, and the doctor's visit meant another bill. I had a waiter's call sitting up in bed with a virulent barrage or a cold in the head. He drove no car, so he walked to the gate where our dog would meet him to say he was late. For he stopped on the way to deliver four twins, cure three terminal cancers, and splint ten broken shins. He'd climb up the stair free from all those dramas, where I lay like a meal in my best Wednesday pyjamas. He'd warm his cold stethoscope before sounding my chest, take Teddy's temperature and rub Vic under my vest. He knew that prescriptions were paid in hard cash, so he'd mention a poultice could be made of bran mash. He'd pat my hot hand, take a wee cup of tea, and accept like a gift my small bottle of pee. He worked all the hours that God ever gave, went late to his bed, and early to his grave. Jury grant, plenty. Do as you're told, keep your nose clean. As you grow old, scream, I silent scream. I didn't exist and never was me. The things that I wanted never will be. You Rosie! Oh, there you are. Listen, I've ran out of milk for the Wade's cornflakes. Could I tap some after you to get his gyro? I've born with enough left for the tea, Annie. I can give a wee drop marble if that's any use. Oh, aye, that'll tease him. Bloody nuisance his weeds through the air, eh? See him up the stairs? He's no slow, is he? Ha! You don't have to tell me about him. <laughs> I'm saying thoughts go ahead. He's got the social come in the day. You wouldn't breathe a word, will you? God strike the stiff accord. Well, he had the bloody cheek to ask me for a wine of the dirt. Christ, he's no fear. That's no a dig you've got there, it's a mountain lion. That's he wanted for anyway. 
to scare the shit with the social man. You see, the dog goes in the same room where the furniture's all quaint. Dead fog, see that, you and so is he? I mean, talk now, he drop milk off you once. I'm taking a dog off you. That ya ball, I call that what I call it. <laughs> Tell me, Rosie, just what do you do for life, Uncle? Christ, Dan, you never gave it a thought. Here, when you kiss the wire, when he comes, I'll make you I'm no one. How the bloody hell can I give you the wire? I'm not letting him in either. See what I mean? You can't be too careful. They'll play on your good nature up here if you let them. Oh, by the way, have you got a couple of slices of bread you could give me as well? Speaking of by the way, is by the way. I saw you at show last night. Did you see him? Just after seeing that, ain't I? What the scum to get into? He'd the cheek to bring up his carry it to. Oh, Lord, my lobby care. How you put up with it, I'll never know. Oh, he's in a <coughs> short lead, don't you worry about that. Oh, come away with you, woman. You've been saying that as far back as I can mind. I mean it this time, but... And you've been saying that, I know. I'm telling you. Did I tell you what happened the other night? I woke up <laughs> in the middle of the night with this hell of a pain in my arse. What the pull if it was? Your pile's acting up again, Annie. No. His teeth flew out and I was lying on top of them. Well, <laughs> you do bear the one this time. My arse is like a tea strainer. I right enough, eh? Do you mind the last time we lost them? Long a teeth out and tried to stick the cat in a tumbler of water. Ah, he's gone doing the hill fast. Oh, There's nothing you can do with him. Nothing you, you wish. Do you mind the condoms that he bought me? Still lying in there, not even at the poke. What? They ones you bought me your last pair? They ones. I think I'll have to buy them an inflator or something. Can you no have a talk with him? Oh, it's no use. We used to have a good laugh. No any more. There's nothing good about his drinking nowadays. Oh, why, there is I nearly forgot. All oh, my plants are coming up a tree. With him pissing on them. Na name me God, Annie. How you put up with it, I'll never oh, know. You don't know the profit. You don't know the profit. As bad as that. Mind you, my skin makes up for it. What are you talking about? I dip him when he's drunk. Do you know that wee twat gets nearly double the wages he gives me? That's a terrible way to live, Annie. Tell me every time. Yeah, mind you. Stupid Egypt had to go to the doctor with something his liver last week. Oh, stop having me over. Telling you, Rosie. Did he get something off the doctor? For his mother, like? Oh, aye, aye. Pun onions. <laughs> it's no funny, Annie. Oh, Christ, if I didn't laugh, I'd greet you. Can you not go to the doctor and have a talk with him? <laughs> do you think it would do any good? Nothing to lose. Set my legs, maybe. Well, it's worth a try. And you never know. You might get used on that's fine, the air guy them stew. Right enough, eh? Know that I'm sexed after oh, anything. I'll give that a try, eh? Ah, uh, get a bash in. As I say, it's worth a try. Right enough. Oh god, is that the time I better go? Listen, thanks for breathing the bleed right. leather, eh? You never know I might be in, in for you to go to the chem with me again. Ta ta! <laughs> Easy. Eh, certainly, 
cannot step out. I mean, over you. And I don't intend to try. Ah, oh, you can, hen. Hey, come on, eh? Hey, come on. And listen, I promise you, I'll no lay a finger on you. Will you please get out of here at once? I don't know what you think you're doing in here in the first place. I'm eating my chips. That's what I'm doing. Just eat my chips and I'm not doing any hurt to anybody. Well, you can eat your chips somewhere else. Go on. Get outside before I call the police. That's pissing down outside, missus. And my chips was getting all soggy. Good, it's bad enough the way they tallies water the vinegar. Do the bloody rain getting into them as well. All right. I've asked you politely to move and you refuse. I'm going to get a policeman. Right, right, on you go, hen. You never know. You might be lucky. Oh, my granny has tuberculosis. My granny has only one lung. But she'll never die of oh, consumption. Cause tomorrow she's going to be hung. <laughs> oh, oh, my bloody head. Splitting. Oh, I should never have had that last bottle of wine. Neither I should have. It must have been a bad year. Oh, hey, here. I'm going to get a policeman. I could have dealt her. I could have dealt Mrs. Padloaf. You'll not get a bloody policeman walking about in a night like this. No <laughs> bloody fear. You didn't get policemen walking about anywhere nowadays. Oh, no. You see, that's progress for you. So it is. I phoned from the box on the corner and the police said they'd be here right away. Right away? My, that's quick work. Just like Starsky and Hutsky. Eh? Here, can you no just come in and uh, shut the door? There's an awful draught in here. And I've got an awful sair heed. You want a chip? Hey, Miss Nancy, you want a chip? No? Want a bit of black pudding then? No? All right. I'll just keep it and finish it myself. Don't you dare throw that filthy chip paper away in this nice clean clothes. I wasn't going to throw it away. Anyway, I haven't read it yet. Family of ten terrorised by a rogue cat locked in the loo. Hey, did you read that? Hey, did you read that? It's, it says here there was this wild cat. It got locked in and it was stopping them off for years in the lavvy. Eh, eh. I didn't think they'd be terrorised, you know. I think they'd be scared shitless. See, see if I was a wee cat or a wee dog. You wouldn't have touched me out in the rain then, would you, missus? Oh, no. No. And you wouldn't get the police for to put me in your clothes either, would you, missus? Oh, no. No. Because I'm just a human being, and that's different, isn't it? Aye. Just a human being which had a wee drop to drink, and God almighty, my head is killing me. So it is. You see, I, see, I had a wee bit of an argument with my pal. See, I wonder where he's got to, by the way. Yeah. Aye, that's what I am, missus. I'm just a human being. So I can't sit in your nice clean clothes till my head gets better, or my pal comes back for me, or the pissing rain goes off. Oh, no, because I'm just a human being. No a wee cat nor a wee dog. It's your pal! I mean, your friend in here somewhere too. No, no, look, I tell you, we had a wee bit of an argument, see. You see, he said, he said it was Maggie Thatcher taking away the beer and school milk that has went and turned them into oil and punks. And I said it was not. I said it had nothing to do with Maggie Thatcher, I says. I said it's all that bloody pot sniffing they're going in for nowadays. And then he went away. Mind you, he says to me, he says, he says, I'll come back and get you. Aye, that's what he says. He says, I'll come back and get you. But he hasn't come back. Mind you, he wasn't looking too well when he went away. His mouth was all covered in blood. 
Hey, listen, missus, what do you do for your headaches? I lie down in a darkened room and... It's none of your business what I do! Oh, no offence, missus, no offence, no. But it is a well-known medical fact that the mere intelligent you are, the mere headaches you get. And see, for the way you talk, I figured you for to be an intelligent woman. I mean, excuse me if I'm wrong, like, I wasn't meaning to be personal, if you see what I mean. I do get fearful once. Mm. When they come on, I just can't do anything. Is that a fact? I had one last night, mm. just after my daughter phoned me. I took the tablet the doctor had given me, and I lay down with the tea bag compress. <laughs> but it didn't help a bit. I was just useless for the rest of the night. I don't know why she had to go and get a job in Glasgow. Oh, and why she has to live there as well is quite beyond me. She had a lovely home here. It's a big flat and there's only the two of us. Oh, she had every comfort. All her meals made for her. And she was quite free to come and go and invite her friends around whenever she wanted. I didn't interfere in her life at all. I'm not that kind of a mother. You know, some people just don't know when they're well off, do they? But no. She just had to have a place of her own, she said. Aye, you see, that, that's the young ones all over for you. She doesn't realise how I worry about her. I've got to phone her every morning just to see that she's all right. And to check that she's up in time for her work. Last week I forgot when it was her day off. And she was quite cross when I phoned her at seven in the morning. Oh, you, you shouldn't have worried so much. I mean, see me, I stopped worrying years ago. Oh, I would if I could, but I can't. We're all made differently. Oh, I wish I weren't so sensitive. I really do sometimes. But see me, see, see me, see, see I'm, I'm, a, I'm a philosopher. You know, I think a lot, and I think a lot about a lot of things. Yes, I'm sure you do. I mean, do you ever think that life is just a boat? You know, a boat full of yo-yos, sailing for Hong Kong. You see, that's what being a full officer means. She's over 30 now and still no sign of Mr. Wright. I don't know. When I think of how happy Alec and I were, oh, all these years and never a crossword between us. Aye, uh, you see, you're like me, Mrs. You're all on your own now. Aye, uh, and sometimes it can be a hard, cruel world. And God, you know, my head is off his seat, honest. It, it, there's something wrong with it. I could give you some of those tablets I bought on prescription. Well, they're much better than aspirin. I could just nip up and get them for you. <coughs> Unless you'd like to come up and have them yourself with a wee cup of tea. I can make them up for myself anyway. Right, on your feet, Jimmy. Don't worry, madam, you go up to your flat. We'll see to your friend here. We'll be right back to where you work with you later. Which floor? Second, but... Look, I said on your feet. Are you hard to hear him? I, I wasn't doing nothing. I mean, I'm just sitting here waiting for my pal. I don't know where he's got to. OK. Up and out. Get him, we will. God almighty. I can't stand right. Oh, listen, son. Hey, there's something wrong with my head, so there is. Go, go and take a wee look for me, will you? Just up here. There's something wrong with my head. My God. <laughs> My God. So you've lost your father, have you? Aye, well, him, him and I had a wee bit of a... Uh, argument? Aye. Aye, I know. This is your lucky night, Jimmy. I have to know where your father's right at this very moment. And my, will he be glad to see you. Eh? Hey? I've just seen him, Jimmy. Just seen him. But wait a minute. You don't know my pal. So how do you ken it's him? He's sitting in casualty. Doing the road at the infirmary, looking very sorry for himself. And he's got his two front teeth missing. His two front teeth missing? Ah, well, it's no my pal, you see, because my pal got all the aunties. <laughs> no, he hasn't. But he soon will have. You see, they were lost, but now they are found. What are you on about? You Polish men all talk like you were on the bloody television, knew that they getting your guns to play with. What the hell are you talking about? We found your pals missing teeth, Jimmy. They're embedded in your skull. <laughs> They're eating them, did you? Go on, old man. Say you're sorry to the lady. Let's get going. But officer, it's... I'm, I'm sorry, Mrs. Lady. And, and I'm sorry about your daughter, too. Come on. 
All right, do you? Aye, regular. Once a month inside the Sockton Hotel. The Sockton Hotel? I've never heard of it. <coughs> I'm sure it's not in Corstorfen. <coughs> I'll have to ask that nice lady in the off license if she's heard a place called the Sockton Hotel. I wonder if the Esther Lopen wants the time half past ten. I might just catch them. I know there's nothing in the house because that was the last bottle I had last night. And a wee drop of sherry would just settle my nerves. Otherwise, I know I'm going to get one of my dreadful headaches. <laughs> in a public hospital in my life before. But old 
snoopers. Oh, that's my doctor. Oh, he's a pop, but I just adore him. He said my operation was much too serious. And if I insisted on having it in a private nursing home, he would just wash his hands of me. And he would have, yes, really. You don't know old snoopers. So then I said to Bobby Kins, I said, oh, by the way, that's my husband. <laughs> you have met him, of course, have you? No, you were still coming out of the anaesthetic and groaning like silly laugh visiting day. <laughs> oh, he's a pop, but you'll just adore him. So then I said to Bobby Kins, I may survive the operation, but I will certainly die of malnutrition afterwards. <laughs> I ask you, have you tried to eat the lunches in here? Well, of course, I don't even try now, no. But you know what I do? Do you? I mess it about. Yes. I took all that revolting grey ectoplasm that was masquerading as Yorkshire pudding. <laughs> and I chopped it all up along with the mummified horse flesh. And I messed it all about on the plate. Yes. Because do you know not, not what they do when you send it back? They use it again. <laughs> oh, listen. I've got some real patty de foie in my locker. Oh, Bobby can brought me it in. <laughs> he knows I just can't do without my nosh. Would you like some of the cocktail biscuit? Yes. Yeah. The what my <laughs> themselves. I'm awfully sorry, nurse. But here, I think you'd better give them to that Mrs. Woman in the next bed. She looks like she's going to be sick. I signed the pledge. The mere thought of drink set my teeth on edge. I said dib, 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 and straightened my woggle. Then allowed my scout master to make my mind boggle. I learned of hellfire each and every Sunday. Put it all behind me first thing on Monday. 
My parents had standards, strict and severe. They instilled them devoutly with a clout in the ear. I grew up afraid of retribution to come. Like my fingers when strapped, my brain became numb. <laughs> it was always the shadow waiting to pounce, till I found that a quick snifter would restore all my bounce. So, I'm a fine fellow now, and I'm one of the boys. I can beat up my wife without too much noise. And my children are frightened. I don't spare the rod. They'll learn to fear my way, the good wrath of God. Something. Look, what's the matter with you? How does it mean there's got to be something the matter with you? <laughs> well, I'm not the one that's frigid. It's frigid. Look, you can't deny it. We used to be at it every night of the week when we were first married. Aye. And you used to have a drink out of the shade before you came near me. Oh, look, Christ, I'm just in for my work. Does that not show how much I want you, baby? Where do you think I've been all day? At the hell found me Sue Ellen? The only day any here. What? To make a wee effort. <laughs> you came in the night, ate your tea, poured three cans of eggs, poured down your gum, and sat there farting and scratching yourself before you, <laughs> before you decided to give, give me the rubber red for power with the how about a wee bit hey? Plenty about, you know. Aye. But you'd have to go off your backside and get some. And neighbor would blame me. If a man's denied these rights at him. Okay, okay, away you go. Away you go. I'll tell you what. I'll send your fancy bit your underpants with a skid marks on them to work. <laughs> Look, Lorna. Come only want to read that woman. Look, it's only natural. No. Natural. But you want an inflatable doll or something, eh? I'll be there whenever you feel like it. What do you want me to do with myself? Splash myself with brute? Play your love songs in the bloody violin? That's about all you're good for, eh? Fiddling about. I want to be with gentleness. Oh, there's more to be the man than poking and shoving at me. You say I'm not a man? Well, they should be what a real man's like. Get in there! I'll give you away for my useless bitch! Ah!
My dad says it's just putting the wrong way. But it's got the devil's face on it. You know who I know? A big sister told me, see? She counted them one night when she was waiting on her boyfriend <coughs> for <coughs> Then she counted many horns were in the wallpaper. Six hundred. That's my wee insurer is. <coughs> See, after she counted them all, she fell out with her boyfriend. <laughs> and he wasn't even in. That's her son, isn't it? Aye. I like Big Peter. He was my pal. He used to send me stacks of messages. They kept forgetting stuff. But I didn't care. Because he always paid me. He used to send me down the tune. He said the fifth seven bus was on. Dead daft sure he was. My mammy always does the wallpaper on your house. She says my dad's hopeless. <laughs> she, she says he was a good piss at us. I can't draw my peons. Can you? I tried it once. <laughs> but it ended up being squiggly. <laughs> And she gets stacks of blues for nothing. They <laughs> 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 should look at me, any. <laughs> I hate her. <laughs> no something. Oh, Kelly gave me the strap today. For nothing. <laughs> Just because I farted in the class. But <laughs> 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 well, that's not a tuna song. <laughs> you got the nurses, eh? <laughs> now you just clean. The <laughs> polish well, has got boogies. <laughs> I'm not sticking at his sock. <laughs> Billy Shankly's my best pal. <laughs> but my mama says I've not to play with him. <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> Is that what you've got now? A million of these pizzas and chips, crisps and eggs and jam, honey. Oh, I love them all. Haven't you realized they're to rob your ways yet, Ebenezer Gorge? Who are you? I'm the spirit of your pizza's past. My pizza's past? Of course, not to mention such foods like chips, jam. Honey, milk, mm. pies and bread. Mm. You may think it's nice, but wait till I take you through your path. 
I want to see kids yelling and shouting about the place for anyway. That boy you got when you were only eight years old. You were healthy then, but then you got school dinner. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I remember them all right. Ah, hey, it's school dinners. See what you will, school dinners make me ill. And shepherds find me see me from the time. All school dinners come from Christmas time. School <laughs> Why didn't you like them, Gorge? Because they didn't taste like crisps, chips, or sweets. No. You see now how healthy you are, fat, but compared to what you are now. How'd you work that out? Could you play football now? No. The only thing you can do is eat. Even that surprises me. What? <laughs> bits of my teeth and it tasted awful. Oh god. Oh. But still you carried on with all the same eating habits after this. Will you come out with me tonight, Eileen? You must be kidding. No I'm not, so will you? Positively not. And before I you ask why, I'll tell you. You're fat and revolting and your teeth are about as nice as my granny's coal cellar. Oh, Helene. She was lovely. I wish you'd been more handsome, then she'd have gone out with me. Have you forgotten what she said next? Look, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to upset you so much. But if you change then, ask me again and I'll say yes. <laughs>
Beste mooie ogen. Beste mooie ogen. Laat puur roos bief. Laat poos. Wat is het? Wie heb ik? Zo niet te vinden. Take another minute. About 15. Well, that used to be about 30. Aye. About that. How about yourself? I tried. See, I got up last week and I just says to myself, that's it, I'm stopping. Never again. How long did you last? About three minutes. I expect you felt the benefit though. Not really. See, I couldn't enjoy my breakfast coffee without a couple. See, all I could think about was, oh God, I'm gasping. Listen, if you had trouble stopping, there's a new method. It might help. New method? Aye. I've never heard about that. Well, well, tell me about it. What happens is that you load as many as you like, but you take less and less each time. That sounds good. Does it work? No, it's useless. You just take millions and millions of tiny little ones. I'm not really sure I want to stop totally. I mean, I really enjoy it, especially if I've no hudging for a while. Aye. You know when the best time for one is, don't you? Afterwards. You know? <laughs> That's what is most satisfying. A long, good one. <laughs> I like one, Jordan. Jordan! I don't get long enough to eat one. <laughs> when else do I like one? Oh, on the phone or with coffee. What about under stress? Oh, I definitely have more when I'm under stress. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, see after running for a bus, I definitely need one. You have to have one then, don't you? See, especially people like us. See, we start to say, um, I can't remember a time when I didn't. That's a problem, eh? See, once you've got the habit, you just kind of kick it. I'll tell you what, if I have any kids, they're not going to have one breath while I'm still alive. Let your body smoke. Give up breathing.
It was a cold winter's night in the winter. In the streets a nude naked woman was lying. A wee fella shouted, first aid! This woman's either dead or she's dying. As I knelt down beside her, eyes averted, a blue from her navel some dust. Then I gave her mouth to mouth resuscitation. Well, a man's got to do what he must. After an hour sucking and blowing, things didn't go according to plan. The folk run a book kept on shouting, Gaffa, you dirty old man! She was carried off deed in a stretcher by two men near to a greet. I felt helpless, lost and despairing, and hastily beat a retreat. Next day I sobbed at her graveside as I read these words on her wreath. You cannot take it with you, but she could, because she swallowed my teeth. <laughs> When I was young, my father said, Remember, son, the Clyde is red. McLean and Maxton led the fight to prove forever left is right. On polling day, the message clear. Kick out the Tories on their ear. Create new jobs, destroy the slums. Build for us all our Jerusalem." Life was all so simple then. Their hearts were pure. They saw their fellow men filled with true pride, erect and tall, hands linked to catch the weakest, should they fall. My father did not live to see the nice, respectable SDP, <laughs> nor hear foot say, congratulations, on Maggie's Falkland operation. And lucky for him, he never did know that fear is the dung that makes selfishness grow. Or oh, that a man with the foresight of a louse would vote for Tory to buy his own council house. medical equipment and highly trained staff. Now the doctors are particularly pleased with the new anti-cancer machine which cures all types of cancer and ours. Here come the doctors now. Morning Mrs B, how's that touch of lung cancer? Still coughing blood. No doctor, I feel ever so much better now. Am I ready to go home? Well I think so Mrs B, but uh, a wee slight examination can hurt, can it? Whatever you say doctor, you know best. Uh... Hmm? and improve services all round. Hey, you've not paid your cleaning bill. This bed's for paying customers, not scrounders. Oh, no, please, please, don't get your money. Please, let me stay. Oh. Of course, if you don't pay your bills, then you leave the private wards, and there's a lot of bills to be paid. Paint colours, £500 a day. Clean linen, £325 a day. Examination by doctor, £2,000 a time. Cleaning, £400 a day. Anaesthetic, £20,000 an hour. Use of bed, £400 by four big hours of relaxation. <coughs> Great if you can afford it, but if you can... Right, get arms! Get her arms! No, no, you get arms, no, get arms! 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 No, get arms!
Shot a thread. Bond your watch. Like. Not one of those irresponsible scroungers that didn't take out health insurance, are you? There's been a mistake. I'm a private patient. What's the matter? Don't you like what looks too dirty for you, eh? Don't get smart with us, pal. And no self pity either. Yes, we've been through all, you know. Yeah, he was a bag manager. And she was a taxi driver with her own cab. And I was a bishop. Yes. Here in the private wards of future hospitals, it's not just the poor who end up here. Even respected members of society, like this ex-army officer who fought in two world wars and a global thermonuclear exchange. And the dustman strike. And the dustman strike. Anyway, they're all poor now. They run out of money, treatment terminated. And they'll all stay here until they pay up or die. So how much do you owe? Fifty thousand. You're in the shit. Both eyes and a kidney. Half a life too, I should wonder. What do you mean? Well, if you can't pay your bills, then you have to sell your body parts. Let me see. Hmm. Five hundred pounds for a kidney. One hundred pounds per eye. Oh. Twenty pounds for a pint of blood. Oh. But then you have to have to pay for your upkeep. And then there's your interest payments to meet. And you have to pay for the cost of your operations. I have to pay to lose mine. And if you want to eat, that costs money too. This is a hospital, you know, not free accommodation for free loaders. Hmm. Oh. I hate coming in here, you never get a tip. That's no use for. Who says it then? Privatisation! What? Listen, in the old days, everything done in hospitals was carried out by public employees for the good of the community. Then in the 1980s, a government called the Tories. Why were they called that? Because they tore the health service up. Anyway, oh. everything these public employees did started <coughs> getting done by private companies at a profit at the lowest cost possible. At first it was just people like you. Porters, cooks, cleaners, and that kind of thing. And then, because no one fought back, everything got privatised. Doctors, nurses, theatre staff. Here, yeah, what's the matter with her? Oh, that's all right. She's dead. services, more efficiency and a saving in real terms to all those people that pay taxes. That's you and me. What about all that, that uh, old couple there? He's had a stroke and it's affecting his memory. He's getting worse and he's, he's, soon he'll not be able to look after himself. And the only hospital that can take him in is over 40 miles away. Well, his wife must do his duty and look after him at home. His wife has cancer. His children then. 
Fay took Mr. Tebbit's advice and go on their bikes. Sad, but they should have made provisions for their old age. They did. They contributed to a National Health Service. They gave up five years of their life fighting in a war for this country. You should be more uh, concerned with your contributions to the National Health Service. We care about these people, and you can't put a price that on that. That's just an excuse for slipshod work, and if you're not careful, I'll cut your wages. Wages? Is that what you call for? Yes. Do you know what I got for a whole year? You mean to tell me you've worked for the National Health Service for a whole year? Yes, 365 days. 365 days? For 365 days, you haven't done a stroke of work for me. And how do you mean that? Well, it's simple. And I'll prove it to you. Right, there are 365 days in a year, correct? Correct. Now, you get a day off in the summer, a day off in the autumn, a day off in the winter, a midterm day off, and a day off for Her Majesty's birthday. Right, now that's five days from 365 days is 360 days, correct? Yes. Now, how many hours in a day in a week do you work? Oh, eight hours a ah, day. Ah, but there are 24 hours in a day. So, eight hours is only one third of a day. One third of 360 is 120 days, correct? That's right. We are now left with 120 days. Now, how many weeks in a year? Ah, but you only work a five-day week. That's two days off every week. Two times 52 is 104. Great. 104 from 120 is 16 days. Well, that's great. Right, now you get Edward Trades off. Oh, yes, I always have Edward Trades That's 14 days from 16 days leaving two days. Two days? Do you follow me? I'm way ahead of Now you get a day off for Christmas and a day off for New Year, correct? Yes. Two from two leaves nothing. So you've never worked for me at all? Listen, could you say all that again? If you're not careful, I'll cut your redundancy money. Take one when the pain's bad, Mrs. McAdam. Here's to you, Nye Bevan. Tito to all my days. And I wind up a junkie. What was that, Lungy? I said Tito to all my days. Hey, they were very strong in temperance in their days. What? The hungry marches. The hunger marchers, son. That's what I said. Well, we were ice sober, young man. Ice sober. Aye, so you say. I believe you. Thousands didn't. Thousands. Moving. Marching. Ah, I didn't. I can't see them. Where? Oh. The marchers? No, the messages. You put them all there. You're getting me as bad as yourself. Anybody here in a stocking would take us for a pair of doddery old fools. You're right. Rules. You had to have rules. Oh, I had. Discipline. Boundaries of acceptable ideology. What was unacceptable one day was the party line the next. I sometimes forgot where we were supposed to be going. The music was squeezed out by the words. Dry. Thirsty. Dry. Like the marchers. So that's that, yes. Are you cold, old Jim? Cold? Out in the cold. Not amenable to discipline. The factory gates. The scrimping and the scraping to get by. All the years. All the pamphlets and leaflets. The meetings and strikes. All the brave new words. Social fascist. Anarchist. Revisionist. Opportunists. 
Slogans they stone people to death with. Where, where did that happen? The dreams, the visions. No, 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 the child's had a message. Think you're awfully smart, don't you? I must be. I wedded you. I think you kid the life with me half the time. Anyway, it's all one. Did I not go to the post office with you? I know. Aye, the wee lassie downstairs. The wee lassie downstairs. Aye. It'd be a black day for us if Ina does move. It's a good job they're still neighbours. Any kind of job. Black. Blacked out. No way back in. Aye. They didn't get their account books wrong then, did they, Algin? They'll no forget you. Every word door in this trade will shut in your face. The one promise they did keep. There'll be a row about this. And we are not pro. <coughs> Solidarity, eh? No. There's no near meetings for us, son. The meetings are finished. All the meetings. Captain Blood, that's what it was. What are you hammering about? Um, you, you know what they said. God, it was um, That's what it was. Where is it? Hitman and Lake. <laughs> Errol Flint. What is he? My God and Governor, you remember, do you? Adventurism, they said. And I cried you. Captain Blood. Ah, you're some man. Anyway, it was a good picture. You isn't fit to waste your boots, son. Ah, well, he never had you at his back. No, even any other business. No. Well, that's all right now. Away. That's fine, but put them in the drawer, will you? Hi, hi. What was that, you know? How many letters? A book? Film? A play? No, no. That. Your stroke. Aye, that's what I said. It damaged the memory bit of your brain. A booty. <coughs> It'll get better, eh? No. You've been told a million times. There's nothing they can do. An operation. No. That's all right then. Put the things away, son. That's all right. Are you sure they're clean? Clean? Aye, clean. <coughs> we ain't kept clean. You're getting off a bad manner in your old age. Where are you now? Our boy. Aye. Aye. He had to make his choices. That's what all boils do, not he? Choices? Motor cars. Eh? Eh? 
video. Colour telling. Hi. Hi. Dear fortnight in Spain. We were in Spain, eh? Aye, old Jim. We were in Spain. Uh, it was near a holiday, though. Our choice. His choice. Nice house. The more you have, the less you have. The less you have, the more you have. Well, you'd be all right then. Aye. Again. No small. No small people. That's for sure, Alec. No. Not for nothing, Jess. No for nothing. No, that's right. Here. Put the two bobs in the meter. I'm not supposed to get the wee lassie. I'm the, the, the guy. No tick-tocks. I'm not supposed to. Can't be a bastard. No. We'll no bother I now any more. Put it the money in the meter and make sure you turn the gas on. What about the, uh, the, the... Turn it on, old man. <laughs> Come on to bed. Now let you warm your cold feet on me. I forgot to. It's I, all right, Alan. I forgot to. Do. What's that? The rest of your messages? It's not that. Is it the kid? The book, aye, the bit that's my heart deep, yeah. I did kid. Looking back on my life, I feel my greatest enemy has been the cooking stove, a sort of tyrant <coughs> who has kept me in subjection. With the mango and the sewing machine, I am on fairly good terms regarding them as friendly allies. But the stove, the cooking, preparing and clearing away of four meals a day, which I do not want, are things I hate with an undying hatred. I would sell my two loaves any day to buy roses. There, there. You never, ever be singing my love songs next. No, no, no. Can we not just carry up? Have a wee rest now. Jeff, my heat's off me so. <laughs> Have a wee rest, eh? Aye, Alec. We'll have a wee rest.
last. And the pawn shop be passed. But unfortunately, last. And we'll be winning the pools. When I was young, we lived in home. But the rain would stop. In the bucket, flip flop. But the ceiling would drop. While we were safe at school. When I was young, we lived in hope. But the rats and mice. Not to mention the lice. We cheated a vice and just worked to rule. When I was young, we lived in the hope. If the mother got laid in the high bottom bed, all our bells would get rid of it. dad would boot at the door. When I was young, we lived in hope. What with Granny going daft? She'd do something fat. And we laughed and we laughed. Not knowing we were cruel. Oh, those were the good old days, the good old days you see. With friendly neighbours to share our labours. Conversation. We didn't need a welfare state to learn us to appreciate our dear old folks and little jokes. Oh, bring back those good old days, those good old days to me. Oh, yes, those were the good old days, those days when we lived in hope. The day I believe that I know, Ian Paisley is next for Pope. There was a national health that that's your place. Gaffer Pogo, uh, we've got stage manager Andy, lights Tessa, sound Kevin, we've got crew of John, Frank, Robert, and Stephen, we've got wardrobe Marion and Ruth. Can I have a big round of applause for these people, please? <laughs> On props, we had Jenny, Teresa, Lorraine, Isabel, and Beatrice. Backstage, we've got Colin, Isabel, Ruth, and Teresa. For refreshments, we've got Edna and the janitors. Can I have a big plot of applause for those people? Well? <laughs> uh, we've got the stewards of Tam, Charlie, Tam, Tony, and Dave. They're still over there. Oh, they've got They're away. They're not far away. Uh, we've got Mike Greenlaw, Theo, and Davey, and all the drivers, and something, something, something that drove everybody to rehearsals. A big applause for everybody. <laughs> And we've got over here in the band, we've got Uncle Ian on bass, <laughs> Uncle David on drums, <laughs> Uncle David on guitar, and last but not least, Uncle Graham, our musical director, sitting at the piano. <laughs> and, and certainly last but not least, I think that's everybody, yes, that's everybody. we've got our director, who's done a bunk. But could we have a round of applause for our director, Mr. John Murtaff? Thank you. And we're going to the cast of Empty Tinky Halligalum. Thank you. And last but not least, 